Miriam Voice ACV. Today we are going to present to you Sadat Abari. Sadat Abari is a performance artist who lives in London and she uses dance, rap, hip hop and drama to convey her message. Welcome to our show. We are very glad to have you in here today because young uh, performers uh, like you are very important for our show because you have to share your expertise, your experience with us and uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. It's an honor. Yeah, well, it's a it's very in, uh, interesting show we run and we wanted to learn a little bit about it and uh, before we go into the detail. Uh, I, I wanted to learn a little bit about you, uh, you know, from childhood, all the processes in becoming the uh, yes. person you are. And uh, I wanted to learn that. And please uh, tell us about it. Yes. Um, my name is Saidet. It's an Arabic name. Uh, my dad is from Nigeria. Uh, my mother is from the USA. So um, I am, I, I'm a beautiful African American Canadian. <laughs> and um, I, I grew up in the States um, up until 1995. And then I married a Canadian and I moved into Ontario. And I've been here ever since. And um, for the past 25 years, <laughs> I've been um, working with young people and just learning um, more about how to represent um, Africans and um, African Canadians in 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 my world. So, yeah, I, I've seen you performing an African an African setting, which is the Black History Month, and uh, you were yeah. so vibrant, and the kids were really really well. So, how how did this idea come? Was it something that came as a result of your personal experience, or by observing something, or some training? Uh, how how was it? Yes, um, as I was growing up, I, I had an interest in working with young people. Um, I started in my church. I was a Sunday school teacher at 14 years old, and I would use any um, money that I had available to fund my class. <laughs> and I tried to make like the Bible stories come to life. And I, I always had that interest. Um, I went to the University of Minnesota for a while because I was pursuing a career as an educator. Um, but um, between that, I, I decided that I wanted to actually work in the church. So I went to Bible school in Oklahoma, and I was trained to work with young people um, as a youth pastor. So I was on that path, and um, I did that for quite a few years. And then in 2004, I had an idea to go into schools. So I developed a program that would um, work with um, students talking about bullying, um, conflict resolution, growth mindset, and just well-being. And I've been doing that for the past 16 years. I'm working with various schools um, throughout Canada and just bringing a message of hope through music, dance, drama, um, student participation. So the show is not just about what I can bring, I'm trying to bring a community of people together. And, and that's my mission to make a difference. Just like my, my backdrop, one person exactly. can make a difference together, we can change the world. And that's just my mission to bring people together and um, pre-COVID, I would travel to schools um, throughout Canada and put on shows for um, two to 500 or more children at a time. We'd see approximately 2,000 students a week. Um, it, was, it was quite amazing to transform a gym into just a big concert. I have a DJ. Sometimes I'd have special celebrity guests with me and we would put on this concert, but with a positive message. 
And um, now I'm holding that same energy in my studio as a virtual presentation. Now, yeah. def definitely doesn't have that high energy that, you know, hundreds of students would bring, but I'm trying to bring life into their classroom now because as you know, Tess, this time is very, you know, it's, it's depressing in some aspects for young people, especially, and they don't know how to navigate that emotion um, until, <laughs> you know, until they're, you know, guided through that. And so I try to bring, bring that mood booster into the classroom now. Um, well, well, the, the, the beauty of your program is when I saw you performing for Black History Month or all the kids who are involved, it's not like they were spectators. They were, they were in it and they were yes. participating. And you could see different kinds of movement in their own way, self-expression. Yes. Let's take a little break uh, and then we're going to continue the conversation with Sadat. <music> It's just in me. My my name means happy and fortunate. My middle name, Titi Lola, means happiness. So I just believe that it's a gift that I've been given to bring joy wherever I am. And mm -hmm. even when I'm having a hard day, it just it doesn't last long for me. And I'm so thankful for that. And I really can't explain why I have so much joy and energy. Even at 48 years old, I'm still like running and like jumping and it's yeah. just in me. <laughs> well, that, that's excellent. Maybe yeah. a lot of us need to copy from you. Because, <laughs> you know, we kind of relegate it to the young ones, but the vibrancy you bring into the yeah. into being who you are in terms of how we engage the world and how you build the self-confidence in the young kids. Yes. Is, very important and not only young even older people can benefit from that movement because you come by movement music and motivation am i right yes yeah so in that in that sense you know uh, uh, I, I wanted to learn more in terms of the the the, the degree that people can continue once they, they engage with you you know once they deal with you and see you yes uh, the degree uh, uh, in which they, they you see or you follow up on the change situation in terms of confidence or standing for yourself or I guess bullying or it could be anything in the positive direction. Do you yes. get a lot of feedback from the parts ones or the school system? Yeah, so um, my show um, has follow up as far as um, the dancing is is more like you can continue to use that in your classroom. I have um, content online that teachers are able and students are able to access that have um, various subjects and things that they can continue to talk about. Um, I really try to bring a message that's repetitive so that it stays in their mind because educators are getting their information and their content from the board and I am just kind of like um, subcontracted so their mandates for what their classrooms need aren't necessarily exactly what I'm giving them but I'm just an additional resource so what I try to do is um, continue the content online that they can go to um, this year I decided to um, start a, a series called diversity moments and I take like maybe one to three minutes where I give history about various people that represent leadership in the black community in the LGBTQ2 plus community and various aspects of our world. And it just gives, it gives um, teachers something to go to and say, you know what, let's learn about this. 
For example, um, during Remembrance Day, I talked about the number two construction battalion. And most kids have never heard about the Black Battalion that wanted to fight for this country, but they weren't even allowed to. And when they decided that they would have Black soldiers, they made them work instead of fight. So they gave them a shovel instead of a rifle. They were making them dig trenches and take dead bodies off of the fields and, and do various things like that. And even though they um, served their country, they were not recognized for like 20 years, 30 years later. Their graves were not given headstones until the, I think it was like later in the, in the 90s when they decided to, to actually recognize these soldiers that fought for, um, for Canada. And so just little um, things like that help um, teachers drive, drive that message of celebrating diversity and representation and that our hi Black history is our history. And so that's what I, I try to do to kind of keep that going in the classroom as far as um, representation is concerned. Yeah, because in, in terms of the Black History Month, you are a very a constant person, which I see every year. And uh, like you say, this is yeah. a continuous process of uh, engagement, bringing out the the historical facts that that has to see the light, like what yes. you mentioned now. And all these things have to be uh, part of the self uh, world. Uh, you're thinking that okay i come from this kind of history the country has this kind of history and it has to be recognized it's yeah. exactly what you're doing and uh, uh, in terms of the uh, the support you get from the black community in this area how, how do you explain it um when i began um touring um with my show it was harold usher that um introduced me to the city of London and into the and and kind of gave me that lift that I needed for the black community. Um, I will forever be grateful to Harold Usher for seeing something in me when most people didn't see it yet. And um, so after that, I I, I had um, support from Mr. Usher. Um, Leroy Hibbert was instrumental in getting me into the school board. Um, and I've had many other people that have, have helped me along the way. Um, Jennifer Slay, um, Colette, there's just, there's, there are many people I feel that have um, been able to build what I have today. So I'm, I'm thankful. Yeah, sure. the, the names you mentioned are very active and well known. Let's take a little break uh, and then we're going to continue the conversation with Zaka. <laughs> of the reception of the wider Canadian community because you're, you're not only dealing with the black children, you know, to deal with any with authors of uh, uh, school boards eh, which, which encompass the cultural mosaic of Canada. And the, how is that reception within the uh, wider community? Yes, um, I feel that um, it's, it's a struggle at first. But I, I find that when I continue to show up and I just continue to just let my face be everywhere, people are always asking me like, why you do everything? You, you're always, you're everywhere. Well, I, I do that on purpose because sometimes like as black um, people, we're always fighting to, to be seen and to be heard. And, and a lot of times we, we step out and we do a few things and then no one recognizes us or, or they ignore what we're doing and then we're discouraged and it's, it's easy to do because we're dealing with it every day. 
But I, I said, you know what? I really believe that there should be in a black representation in children's entertainment. There are 10 um, famous um, children's entertainers in Canada that everyone will know, but you can hardly find a person of color that represents children's entertainment. That, that was the thing that I wanted to ask you. Yep. Is this motivating other as as a young uh, performance artists to come forward and learn from you or, or uh, uh, take something from you and then take it to another level or another dimension? Is, is there that kind of uh, interaction you're, you're seeing with the black youth? Or? Yes, I, I really do. Um, you know, like for I wanted to go back to the people that have helped me because this is um, very important to my growth here in London. Silence you did my first interview when I started touring in schools because at first um, Tim's Valley was like really excited about me, but it took a little while for it to really catch on. And then Silence did an interview about my program and people began to see that because he was working with Mind Your Mind. And um, people were like, oh, this is a reputable, reputable uh, program. I think I'll have it at my school. And then um, I began working with Tim's Valley. And sometimes I was just put in a box as a hip hop artist. And some schools wanted that. And then some principals thought, oh, my kids won't be into that. They're not into hip hop. But I was actually a children's entertainer who happened to rap. So it wasn't a hip hop program, although you need that too in your school. You need to represent, not just go, well, my kids are white and they, they don't, they're not into it, but they need to see leadership, people of color in leadership. And so, so I, I try to do that. And the people and the young people I have working with me, I'm finding that they're starting to rise up and do some great things. Um, I had a beautiful um, student by the name of Trevay Williams working with me. He is now in his fourth year in university and he is encouraging people online. The so things that he says to, um, to encourage his fans is just incredible to me. And I'm just so honored to have had like, you know, um, been able to have time in his life to just help him see what it looks like to really be a, a performer that travels everywhere. So he, he did that with me for a few months. Yeah. That, that, that's excellent because that's what's needed because the next person moves there. Yeah. Much, much on to the next. And, uh, but uh, let's look at the business side of it also because when yeah. you're doing this, uh, there is logistics, expenses, and, you know, uh, I mean, when you're starting something new like this, how, I mean, it must be very difficult in terms yes. of financing all this and going to places and things like that. How were you able to, to deal with those kinds of uh, problems? Well, a lot of it was out of pocket for many years. <laughs> and I don't think, it doesn't matter um, what your race is. When you say you're an entertainer, people just think that's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so try to get a loan. I have a, I have a, like a traveling show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many seasons will that last? Right. So, um, I really had to just <laughs> pay for a lot of things out of pocket, but over time it became my full-time job and, um, it is my full-time job. Even now I'm, I'm doing virtual presentations and I had to invest quite a bit at first. Um, for example, like my backdrops are now in my small um, spare room, but they're being used as my as my studio now. Mm -hmm. But they were my backdrops for my show. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have a DJ, so we have all the sound equipment. Schools don't necessarily have that type of equipment to put on a big concert. So we have to bring everything with us. Let's take a little break uh, and then we're gonna continue the conversation with that.
let's move it, let's move it like this. My heart is pump, pump, pump in love. I can't get enough. Life is good, life is great. When you show love every day, keep your heart healthy. Throw out the bad stuff. Negativity, let's not fight. Let's be friends. Let kindness fill the air. Love is an actual word. You heard, we can change the world. Set the world free.